<laughs> My name is Ozal Ashe. I'm the CEO and founder of Sidesafe. And Nozzy is a prompt. It's a prompt that's been designed very specifically to influence a user's security behavior. The problems we're trying to solve with nudges really relate to um, things that we need as users, as people. In the past, security teams have sent important information by email. The reality is that receiving an email at a certain time might be useful, but of course it may not be. There's so many emails that we receive that aren't that useful. Nudges are generally timed to be received at the right time and they're more effective. And let's be really honest as well, it's just not reasonable to expect people with really busy lives, really busy jobs, really full lives to remember this stuff all of the time. Prompts, in our particular case, nudges scientifically designed to influence positive security behaviors, those things help. One of the things that we've learned is the importance of it being a scientific process. So when it comes to a CyberSafe nudge, making sure that that scientific evidence base is applied is really key. So the methodology we used to develop these nudges was to cut through the barriers that people face when trying to complete specific security behaviours. Once we had compiled a prioritised list of all of these barriers, was to map on the associated cognitive biases relevant to each of these barriers. A good example of a nudge mechanism linked to a specific cognitive bias is related to the security behaviour of not using a password manager. So the nudge mechanism specifically linked to that bias, which we would target and leverage, is reducing that friction. So we would provide a nudge that offers them a choice of the best rated password managers and provide them with support or guidance around how to set them up. One of the biggest challenges for us when building the nudge was to build a very deep empathy and understanding of the people we're building it for because culture of every organization is different and so we had to interview a lot of customers and spend a lot of time with them, talking, understanding them, talking about the tools they're using. And, you know, some companies are very modern, they're using Slack, they're using all of the hot tools on the market. Some companies are still using email. We wanted to ensure that we get representation of all cultures possible. There's a ton of customization available, and that was a really key feature in making sure that we were able to tailor a variety of needs and a variety of cultures across a vast range of organizations. Our focus was to make sure it's as accessible as possible to everyone. And imagine the device you're receiving the nudge on. Most likely it's a very small device, it's a small screen. And so the nudge has to be to the point, it has to use very plain English um, or language. It has to be very accessible on the go in whatever environment you are. What we wanted to do was build something that meant that as the user was inputting more data and we were tracking more behaviors, it was able to respond to that dynamically and let them know what they needed to do next in order to improve their behavior. Nudges are like a sat-nav. We're not assuming a load of knowledge that the user doesn't know, but it's just at the point in time that they need to make a decision, they're given the piece of information that they need most in that moment. What has helped some of our customers to, to at least start using it and get onboarded is just like, think about something you're trying to achieve, some behaviors you're trying to achieve, and then whatever it is you're doing with CybeSafe um, or, or with other security awareness tools to do that, just kind of tack on nudges. So see, okay, let's try sending a nudge to you know this group that's most at risk um, or most likely to complete this, this security behavior and just start from there, like use one, see what happens, and then and then build on that. The way that we're able to deliver a nudge at the right time is by being able to kind of listen to the various different systems that you may already use in, in, on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, uh, either Slack or even your Microsoft environment in terms of Outlook or Microsoft Teams. Using our integrations with those kinds of systems, we're able to, for example, detect that you shared a file that contains personal identifiable information through Microsoft Teams or through your email. And based on detecting that in the Microsoft environment, we're then able to deliver a nudge at the right time to warn you that that may not be a, a, a good security behavior to be having. Imagine if you could get people to do those things without relying on them to remember them. So a nudge would help you when you're at home, getting a nudge saying, 
Have you changed your privacy settings on your social media account? We see a 60 odd percent increase in the number of people who go on to do that because they got a nudge at the right time. Splunk is a security information event management system, so a SIM for short. And SIMs, are, they are a world of endless possibilities in terms of data that we're able to track and measure. So nudges they require in order to be a just-in-time intervention and for us to give that intervention at the right time, they require near real-time data. And Splunk is a data aggregator by being a SIM. If Microsoft, Google, CrowdStrike, Proofpoint, any of those are hooked up to Splunk, we can also get data through Splunk. The possibilities are endless there. By having enough data, we can essentially give people the help they need when they need it and at the moments where their actions may or may not be demonstrating good or bad behaviors. So we're already tracking different data um, in, in the Microsoft suite of products, so that includes um, identifying financial information, so things like IBAN numbers or credit card numbers. Um, we also can detect malicious links. Um, we might detect someone sharing a password. As soon as that happens, sending them a nudge to let them know that, oh, we've caught this, caught this behavior and um, don't do it again sort of thing. Customers should be excited about this because it's going to take a huge amount of manual labor out for the security teams. They're going to be able to fire and forget with this new nudge capability because it will be able to do that itself, knowing exactly what the user knows, knowing exactly what behaviors um, a user needs help with and um, support them in that way. Everything that we do is designed to be able to help organizations visibly see the impact where possible. Sometimes all they can see is that they're not having the influence that they want to have and they need to change things or try different things. Um, but when it comes to the CyberSafe platform, some of that we change and try automatically for them, but actually quite a lot of that, they're able to see improvement over time because now you can start to see behaviors changing on a dashboard. You can start to see risk being reduced. You can see um, attitudes that are being improving, as well as knowledge and all of the other things that organizations want to see. Throw in engagement, throw in advocacy, throw in confidence, all of those different things that you can see on a report and you can see how rich our reporting suite is. You can see exactly the number of nudges you have sent, who they've been sent to, how many people have received them. Um, you can also see, we're just releasing a feature where you can see who's actually clicked on, on the nudges as well and actually engaged. So especially if you've included a link to training, for example, or some type of content, um, you'll be able to see who's, who's actually clicked and engaged with that as well. I think as it's such a new field, one of the things that we're learning together with the science and research team is exactly how much an individual's differences can make a difference in, in how an, a nudge will work for them. So making sure that we have a huge library of nudges is a really important part of building this feature. The biggest surprise uh, during this build process was probably understanding um, how different the companies are, how different the tool stack and the tech stack is, and how different the people are. Um, not everyone understands security behaviors um, as we do, and we had to explain that every little bit, every little decision that a person makes throughout their day as concerning something um, digital, like their digital resilience, is a security behavior. So explaining that um, was a very interesting and um, unusual part. There are many, many different security behaviors that we would like to target and are targeting, that actually there are common barriers and biases that are coming through time and time again. There is an opportunity there to speed up, automate and optimize using what we, what we know are the common barriers that cut through all the different behaviors in order to create products that can recommend suites of nudges, campaigns of nudges to customers very quickly without having to do a lot of background scientific work. Where we are today is we're able to help organizations preempt challenges, preempt um, security incidents and preempt risk. But just because we're at preemption rather than prediction right now today, doesn't mean that actually we can't get to prediction. The reality is this is a data question and exercise. It's why at CyberSafe we are as much a data analytics company as we are a general software company and a SaaS software company as we are 
focused on scientific research. Bring those things together and you significantly increase the chance of this data being applied to predict outcomes. So working on TypeSafe uh, has been really exciting for me, especially because I've come from a background of information security awareness. And so coming to a company where we're actually tackling this problem completely differently, not just you know taking a compliance box, um, actually looking at behavior data, measuring real risk and being able to change that has been, has been really exciting for me.